So this is the Amazon Fire Phone. This was released in July of 2014 as an AT&T exclusive, total price of $650, but could be gotten for $200 on contract, which was, uh, they still had a contract <laughs> at that time. So what we have here is an all glass front. Now this, this model is cracked, unfortunately, but back is still in good shape. You have the Amazon branding here, you have some FCC and regulatory logos at the bottom here. On the side here, we have our volume rocker. We have our uh, camera switch. You also have your SIM card tray here. On the bottom here, we have our speaker, microphone, uh, micro USB. On the other side, we have nothing. On the top here, we do have another uh, speaker, 3.5 millimeter headset jack, and our sleep wake button. Now this phone uh, does sport a 4.7 inch uh, 720p LCD panel and it uh, has a couple of unique things on the front that you may notice here. So on the front here we do have our earpiece and we have a 2.1 megapixel camera on the front. But you may also notice on the corners we have a couple of sensors, they look like cameras, but these are basically uh, IR sensors that can sense the depth and where they are. And I'll show you what that does in just a moment. At the bottom here, we do have a home key. On the back, we have our uh, camera. This camera is a 13 megapixel camera. It does have optical image stabilization and you do have an LED flash right there. So along with this nice 4.7 inch 720p LCD display, um, it does have a really nice build to it, I will say that. So while Amazon's Fire tablets are very inexpensive, they're not made of very good quality materials. This does have a nice heft to it. It does have rubber coating around the edges and it has Gorilla Glass 3 on both the front and the back. And I think it feels really nice in the hand. Um, it doesn't feel cheap, basically, like other Amazon products. So what is unique about those four little sensors? As you may see here, it has this interesting depth Now some of the internal specs of the phone here. So we do have a Qualcomm Snapdragon 800 quad core processor at 2.2 gigahertz. We do have an Adreno 330 GPU for graphics. It does include two gigs of RAM and it came in two storage sizes, 32 or 64 gigs. It does not have an expandable storage, so you cannot expand this via an SD card. Though when you purchased the phone back in 2014, uh, you did have an option of getting cloud storage for free from Amazon Cloud Drive of five gigs. It does include NFC and it does have Bluetooth 3.0. It also came with Wi-Fi 802.11ac uh, and had 4G LTE. Battery size was 2400 milliamp hours and that was up to 11 hours during video and 22 hours of talk time. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the interface here. So the Fire Phone includes what they call Fire OS, and they still have these on their Amazon tablets. And basically it's a skinned version of Android. Now this one is based on Android 4.4. So that's KitKat, so quite a little bit of uh, age on it. And it didn't get very many updates. The last update I see on this that it received was back in 2016. So it got about two years of updates. So. The interface is a little interesting because carousel here and you can go through and you can see what you have here. Now you may see I have installed a couple of Google apps and that's because this phone is terrible without them. So you have this carousel, it shows you recently used things underneath. And uh, yes, you can install the Google Play Store and yes, you can download many Google Play apps, although it is somewhat limited in what you can download. The Amazon App Store is what came with the phone, and it does not have very many options. So you're lacking a lot of good apps on the App Store for Amazon. So a lot of your social media apps aren't there. Um, you do have some 
things that you may find on the Google Play Store. So you have Netflix, you have Amazon, uh, you have HBO Go, I'm sorry, HBO Now, and a couple of games, but these games are not very good. And they're kind of the just kind of cheapy games, not really anything good. So you can kind of see your options here, Clash of Clans, Gummy Drop, and these are not the best games. So you have Minecraft. So aside from this carousel view here, uh, if you wanted to access all your other apps, you can just pull up here and you do have that app menu here. And I will say that the screen looks really nice, all things considered. And what you may notice is it's a little hard to show, but the dynamic perspective that was present on that first screen that you saw is actually present across the whole OS. So that seems kind of like a bad idea because it can drain battery, but all of the icons that are included in the phone, they move whenever you move your face, or if you have it laying down and you're moving around, it will know that you're there. And these move from side to side and they have kind of a shine so I don't know if you can even see that, but it is a cool effect, but definitely kind of unnecessary, especially if you're going through things quickly and just trying to do your normal tasks of the day. So let's go over some of the unique aspects of the phone. Now, aside from the dynamic perspective, which definitely was one of the headlining features of the phone, uh, you did have something called Mayday, and Mayday was basically a thing where you could get assistance from a live person right away just by hitting a button. So if you needed help with the phone, all you have to do is hit the Mayday button and you would get a live person and they could help you with some part of the OS or if you had a question about an Amazon order or something like that, you could just hit the Mayday button and boom, there you go, you get assistance right away. Another, uh, another feature of this was Firefly. And I'm not sure if it's still a thing, but Firefly is an app on the phone that uses the camera and it can identify objects or music um, or a TV show also. So if you, have a, um, if you have an object that's sold on Amazon, you can basically take a, you can put it on your, in your camera's line of sight here, and then it will try to figure out if it has an Amazon product of this. I couldn't get it really to work very well, um, but I did see some videos in the past showing this working really well. Um, however, uh, if it's, if it's not, it matches up with a product photo on their website. So if it's not like the exact pose or position, it's going to have a hard time finding it. Um, but the music is basically kind of like Shazam kind of thing. So you'll be able to listen to listen for the song and then it'll find it on Amazon music. And then you also have the TV, so it can listen for the TV or movie and find out what it is based on that. So it is kind of a cool feature, um, although I didn't have very much good luck with it. So what else is unique about this OS? So you have this here and it's kind of odd because this carousel kind of makes it seem that there's no multitasking, which I have not found any multitasking. But um, another interesting thing is you have a couple of different ways of uh, going through UIs. So you have this side UI here, and this also will move around. So the letters, you'll see the shadow at the bottom will change. Now, unfortunately, it's not gonna work on the camera, but I may try to show you in a different way. But you have a couple of different options here. So you have apps, games. Now, as you can see, when I turned it to the right, more information popped up and that actually works in a couple apps as well. You do have another menu on the other side and that menu is basically kind of like a widget kind of view. So you have your weather here, you can add a calendar, and I believe there's some other widgets you can add there. Now another cool way to access these is you can jolt the phone to the right, jolt the phone to the left to get rid of it, jolt the phone to the left and you hit that menu, jolt it to the right and it will disappear. So I do want to show you this dynamic perspective, but it's just hard to get on camera. So let me try and do it um, from the side here to see if you can see it here. So if you look at the icons here, you'll see that they move as I tilt the phone. And I thought that that was really unique, but as I said, it has to be a battery drain on this. But it is really unique and really cool that they spent that much time to put in that much detail. Now, unfortunately, if you download third-party apps like Chrome, 
it has no extra space on the icon to flip. So you will see kind of a shine going to the icon, and that does happen on all the other ones. But a first party icon has depth. So the, this App Store one looks like an M&M, honestly. But the shine and stuff is really nice. And it kind of reminds me of the Apple TV, how you can use the Apple TV remote to kind of swirl it around and you get this kind of 3D view. So I think it, it does look really nice. And it's really impressive, especially, you know, considering this was from 2014. So I'll show you the settings here. And as I said, it does this in every single app. So it can, I, I will say that it was a little bit, bit uh, dizzying at first to look at. <laughs> so, um, but you do have all this other, all these other options here. I do want to show you the different lock screens that are available because you have many, many, many different options. So these are some of the lock screen scenes that you can use. And there are quite a few of them and they're really nice. <laughs> So they definitely put a lot of time and effort into these little lock screen themes, but these aren't really a they aren't really necessary for using the phone. So they kind of seem chintzy and just not needed. Um, you can rotate the scenes, so that's kind of nice. Um, you can also use your own photo. Um, but here's just an example, and you can kind of see it have like sunlight, the bamboo but it, it really, really is cool. I mean, we have a bunch of different options and I think it shows that this phone could, this did have potential, but honestly, just for this, just doesn't seem necessary. As you can see, we have a little octopus there and that one there. Um, each of them do show the, uh, show the time. Oh, you might notice here is that you have this huge carousel in the way and you have just this black background. You can put your own background on there, but it's kind of hindered by all this. So it's honestly pointless and it looks kind of bad when you put a background on this. They do include some, uh, so I'll show you those. So the home screen wallpapers that they include are kind of just bad. So this is all you have. Colors, that's it. You can use your own photo, but you have blue, fall, orange, purple, that's it. And I think the reason they do that is because they want you to have this kind of dull background with just that carousel. So it's kind of not very personal, in my opinion. Um, it still looks nice, but it just doesn't look as nice with a background on this, especially with this carousel view. And you can't really change this other than you can have parts of it removed. So if you want the recent pieces of this, of each specific app, you can have that removed. So one cool thing though, because this is based on Android, you can use a different launcher. And I did that and honestly, it makes the phone so much better for general use. You can still have that lock screen, but you can also have your own launcher. So you can have a Google launcher, you can have the Microsoft launcher. So just as an example, here is the uh, Nero launcher and you have a more traditional Android uh, launcher and you don't have that weird kind of carousel view and you can just swipe up and you can change it if you want to, but you have your list of apps here. You can move them to your home screen. You can actually have a home screen. So I think that was a really kind of bad way of doing it on uh, the Fire Phone, but I'm glad that you still can use the, not Nero, I'm sorry, Nova Launcher. <laughs> I'm glad that you can still use, you can use folders, you can put them wherever you want, you can have your own background and you don't have to deal with that um, weird carousel view. Another interesting feature of this phone is it does have voice command, but it's not the one you think. So Amazon didn't introduce Alexa until the end of 2014. So this just includes a generic voice control. And sadly, they never updated it to actually include her because had they, it might've been a lot more useful. <laughs> so here, let's uh, try out this voice control. Sorry. I seem to be having problems. Please try again. And as you can see, she sounds a lot like her, but this was a couple this was released a couple months before she came out. Sorry, I seem to be having problems. Please try again. And that's pretty much the extent of the experience that I've had with this. <laughs> um, so most of the included apps on here are pretty decent. Uh, you do have a 
pretty nice phone dialer and it does have that dynamic perspective, but it's pretty traditional. So you have, you have your history of calls, you have your contacts, you have your keypad and your voicemail. So that's not too bad. Uh, you have a decent messaging app here and you can uh, use your own keyboards. So if you wanna use the Google keyboard or whatever keyboard you wanna download from the app store, you can do that. So it's not too bad there. You have your own email client or you can download the Gmail email client if you wanna do that. Um, it does come with Silk browser. Is there an internet browser? It's kind of garbage. So I recommend using Chrome or Microsoft Edge or something else that's newer, um, as especially a lot of these are not updated. Uh, the camera's pretty good, um, I will say, and I will uh, show you some pictures and video clips uh, from that in just a few moments here. cleaning yeah um. and uh, of course you have a lot of Amazon shopping kind of stuff so Amazon owns audio they own um, audible so you have audiobooks here they also have their own music service they have prime video uh, you have books from the Kindle store you have games and all that good stuff the other thing is the maps so they have their own maps using the here now maps so your better bet would be to use Google Maps so how is this phone in 2020? Honestly, not bad. It's pretty basic for uh, today's needs, and it's a little behind because obviously it came out six years ago. But the fact that it is Android and the fact that you can change the launcher, you can install apps from the Google Play Store if you port over the Google Play uh, Store over to it, you have many, many options and many things you can do with this phone still. Camera is actually pretty good. Um, front camera is pretty good and uh, speakers are not too bad. So I think the performance of it is pretty good. The screen is also very nice and battery life isn't terrible. Um, battery life would probably be better if you actually turned off the, uh, the effects that, the dynamic effects and you can have your own launcher and that would actually probably make the battery life much better. Um, but all in all, I'm pretty impressed. Uh, when I first got this, I was really just impressed by the build quality. Although I know Amazon has made tablets and everything, um, their tablets are usually cheaply made, cheap plastic. This is nice Gorilla Glass. You have a nice rubber coating around the edge and it has a heft to it that feels really, really nice in the hand. Um, so if you can find one of these, I think definitely it's something to collect because um, there was never another one. After this, it flopped. That was it. So if you find one, I would get it. Um, I, I wouldn't really use it as a daily driver unless you have to, but um, it's not a bad one. It's really not. So uh, I purchased this phone for just under $20. And one of the reasons being it has a crack in it, uh, which I didn't mind. I just wanted to see how this phone was and uh, see why it failed. And I do see why it failed, but I do see that it has many good features and luckily it's running Android so it's much much better than it would be if it didn't had they left this with just fire OS and no way to have Google Apps and no way to install other apps I could see this being a bad bad phone but the fact that you can port over the Play Store and the fact that you can use different launchers Android is so open and moldable that it's so nice that if a phone is poorly done in their version of the OS and it's just a skinned OS, you can make it your own. So it's not bad in that sense. I think that had, had Amazon done a different phone uh, or a new one, they probably would have taken uh, what they've learned from this one and made it much better. I think they could have made it much better. I mean, Amazon is a huge company. Um, it's just disappointing that they had a one and done kind of mentality with this, but I will say, the good things that Amazon has come out with in the, in the past couple years is definitely the Echo devices. I have a couple of them myself, and they are great. Uh, the Amazon tablets, although cheap, they're great for kids. And man, the kids love those things. They also have the Amazon Free Time, and uh, those also have Alexa built in. So I think had they done another phone, it would have been a much better phone than this one. 
but this was not a bad first try. Anyway, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you enjoyed this look at the Amazon Fire Phone in 2020. Hope to see you in the next video.